Shall we have a conversation about Funbox? Uh, really, what I want to talk to you about is Funbox business loans and lines of credit. And basically, I want to talk to you about seven hacks that speed up your approval big time. I mean, big time. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Story Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you are to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee, or tea, or vodka, and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to talk to you about a platform that is a lender called Funbox. And I want to talk about Funbox business loans and lines of credit. And here are seven hacks that speed up, that speed up your approval big time. Number one, your personal FICO. So if you're interested in getting a loan from Funbox, the, the, the first thing you know you want to do is to have a high FICO, okay? You want to tidy up your personal credit. This is really important because uh, a lot of people apply, even though Funbox is uh, focused on uh, business credit, it's important to understand that there is a correlation, a strong correlation that is between personal credit and business credit, especially if you're a sole proprietorship or you are a business, you are a legit business, but you want to apply without EIN, without employer identification number. So that what, what, that hap what happens here is that you are asking Funbox to actually uh, identify you as, uh, as uh, identify your business through you. Okay, so it's really important to tidy up a personal credit. If you have any uh, the regulatory items, if you have any issues, there are just if you have skeletons in the closets, I want you right now to start cleaning them. It's very important. How do you do that? You can go to uh, annualcreditreport.com. That's one. You can actually go to uh, Credit Karma. You can go to uh, Credit Wise. You can sign up with Nerd Wallet. You can sign up with uh, you can sign up with a lot of uh, free FICO score providers that will help you actually have an idea of what kind of credit score you currently have. This is important, boss. I really want you to pay attention here because don't tell me, oh, well, I was not aware of this uh, this thing on my credit score, blah, 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 blah. No, you want to look at your credit score, and I'm talking about your three credit scores. Don't just look at Experian. Look at, look at TransUnion. Look, in, look into uh, Experian, okay? Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. You gotta look at all three of them because some of those reports may change, okay? So you wanna look at them and see if there is anything negative, anything adverse, anything that are derogatory that will actually lower your credit score. So please, tidy up your personal credit. It's very important. Now, big decision time. Big decision time. What is your personal FICO? This is important. I want to know your personal FICO. Don't tell me 585, it's around 600, it's around 700. No, no, no. Give me a number, a clear number. Do you know your number? If you don't know your number, after this show, I want you to go right now and start paying attention to your number and have clarity. We're talking about a, a finite number, not some kind of delta or some kind of range. No, you need to have your number. The second thing I want you to do, if you want to get the fund box business loans and lines of credit, and this is based on experience, we have actually done this for for hundreds of clients you need to have a strong business plan very important you need to create a rock solid business plan okay and a business plan is not just uh, to tell the to tell a story about your business no it's more than that it tells the lender in this case fun box where you have been where you are right now and where you're going See, this trifecta is really important. We're talking about making sure the lender understands that you you yourself understand your business. You understand the industry you're in. You understand your macros and you understand your micros. Okay, You understand the internal data and you understand the external data. So make sure that you have a rock solid business plan. I'm talking about making sure all the, the components are there, right? Everything from executive summary to company analysis, to industry or market analysis, very important. Analysis of your customers, this is important because you, you really need to understand what's trending 
in your niche, in your in your client base. What, what do your clients need? This is important, okay? You can't be ignorant of that. Otherwise, you're out of business. You are out of business, boss. Okay, so the thing here is that today's resolution is what? To understand our customers, to know what they want, and most importantly, to anticipate their needs. Okay, very important. You, you need to have some analysis of the competition. Yeah, yeah, this is important. You got to talk about marketing, sales, and product plan also in your business plan. Okay, you also need to talk about success around operations strategy, design, and development plans. This is important. Let's have a conversation about that in your business plan, of course. You need to talk about the management team. Are you alone? Is, is this a solopreneurship? Is this the sole proprietorship? Or this is a legit business? So talk about the management plan. Talk about your founders or co-founders, okay? And um, also talk about your financial plan. This is really important. Your financial plan is really important. And your business plan model. And in some cases, they might want to see your appendices. So bottom line is you need to have a business plan if you want to if you want to boost your chances of being approved on Fundbox. Okay, a business plan is a quintessential document that actually talks about your business in a very professional manner. And please, if you have no knack for writing business literature, you want to outsource the whole thing. Don't even try to write something here. No. Outsource the whole thing, pay you $100 or $200, and, and, and you know that someone who is more cognizant of those things can write importantly about your company can write powerfully about your company and that's what we, that's what we need we need power we need we need compelling literature here the third hack i want to talk to you about is the your daily balances okay you want to keep your daily balance your daily bank balance as high as possible now you might be telling me, hey, listen, there is a dichotomy. There is a contradiction between I'm trying to apply for a loan and then you telling me to keep high daily balances. Well, the term high here is relative. What I'm trying to say here is that if your uh, if your uh, average monthly balance, your average monthly cash inflows and cash outflows is ten thousand dollars, try to keep one thousand dollars, ten percent. OK, if it is one hundred thousand dollars, try to keep ten thousand dollars. That way, Fundbox sees a strong management procedure in terms of your liquidity okay let's say you want to apply for a quarter of a million through fund bucks or one hundred thousand dollars they need to see that you can actually um, manage the existing cash flow that you have the existing cash inflow that you have okay and they pay attention to that a lot and sometimes they might ask you to submit your last three bank statements do you think uh, they just want it they're just curious no they analyze they have software they have uh, artificial intelligence the software that actually uh, scans through your bank statements and uh, analyze those numbers. In some cases, they might even ask you to connect your bank account to their system so they can analyze your your your, uh, your data in real time. Okay, so try to keep your daily bank balance as high as possible. And there are a lot of ways you can do this to, if you want to increase your bank account balance. Okay, now you don't need me to tell you how to keep a high balance in your bank, of course, right? But there are Certain things traditionally they have always worked. There are proven, proven steps you can take today, today, not tomorrow, not yesterday. You can take today to increase your bank account balance. What are those? Talk to me, boss. What are those? First, control your spending. You know, it's all about cutting cost where cost is uh, is ineffective, right? If you're wasting money in certain in certain in certain uh, areas, trying to cut costs right now. Control your spending. Increase your income. Try to boost, try to beef up your revenue, right? You want to add new clients to the pipeline? Put your money to work. It's also important. Do you have some extra cash somewhere? Okay, invest it. You can open a business IRA account or you can open a business a business investment account or just park the cash very safely in a business CD account, a certificate of deposit. Whatever you do, just make sure that when Fundbox analyzes your bank statements, they see a relatively high daily bank balance very important and remember when i'm talking about high it is a relative here it's a relative term it is high in comparison to your uh, your average daily balance or your average monthly balance hack number four we want to talk about your debt to income ratio if you want to get a 
a Fundbox business loan or a Fundbox business line of credit and you want to be approved ASAP, you really need to pay attention to your debt to income ratio. This is important. And I'm talking here about your DTI, that's the, D, the debt to income ratio, your DTI not only at the personal level, but also at the business level. Now, if you want to make things very clear uh, and very simple, just apply with EIN only. That way, you know that your personal your personal affairs are safe, okay? And the fund box is not going to it's not going to dig too much into uh, your personal affairs but long story short debt to income ratio is important okay debt to income ratio is actually a metric that measures a lot of stuff and principally your debt relative to your income okay and lenders including fund box pay attention to this if your debt for example let's say uh, let's say boss your debt is too high compared to your income fund box and other lenders for that matter they see this as a sign that you might not make your payment. You might not be able to make the payment. Yeah, because it's all about they are trying to cover their ass. They're trying to really mitigate risk. They're trying to make sure that they lose. They don't lose any money by lending to you. Right. OK, so there are a lot of things you can do if you want to. Well, let's say hmm, let's say you want to improve your debt to income ratio. Right. You're just sitting there just thinking, hmm, oh, how do I increase my DTI? Well, guess what? There are a lot of things you can do. First of all, avoid taking on new debt yeah because DTI when you think about it it's a fraction we've said this before you have uh, on top you have your debt and at the bottom you have your income so if you reduce the amount of debt you take your DTI will go down that's just uh, mathematical okay or you pay down existing debt so whatever debt you currently have you can probably just try to pay down or maybe by 20% or 30% or 50% depending on the resources you have okay and uh, pay more than the minimum always pay more than the minimum our recommendation is for everybody to pay your the credit card balance in full every month now i understand cer certain people can't do that because life happens stuff happens whatever and you just have to cope right so what you want to do here is that you want to pay more than the minimum if um if your credit card company tells you to pay one thousand dollars Pay twelve hundred dollars, twenty percent more. Pay thirteen hundred dollars. Just add a little, a little more, also that can help you. And use the budget, use the budget that can help you with the DTI. So bottom line is money, 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 money. It takes money to generate money. If you want to get a high loan amount, a large loan amount with Fundbox, you better really take care of the money side of things in terms of your existing loans. You need to pay down your existing debt to be able to get more debt. Hack number five. We are talking about business boost. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Now, one thing we have found in our research is that if you really want to get your fund box business loans, if you want to get a large one, business loan or line of credit, you want to boost your business. And the thing here is that you want to boost your business as much as possible prior to applying. Let's say you want to apply next month, okay? And you have done everything, you have all your paperwork ready, your business plan and whatnot. And you know you are ready. You have a convincing pitch. You can talk like crazy. You are really good. You are ready to go. You're gung-ho, right? Well, what you need to do now is to boost your business. In other words, you want to actually create an environment whereby people think there is buzz around your company. You want to have positive press coverage. Maybe maybe you want to contact a local reporter to, to create a story about your business. Now, this has to be done strategically, though, but it is possible, okay? You want to have uh, media mentions, okay? You can consult with a professional marketing firm to launch a new campaign. You can run PPC ads on a regular basis and then use and, and then use retargeting, okay? You can actually uh, do an email campaign also. A lot of things you can do. You can also uh, participate with some type of community event in the area, in your neighborhood. The bottom line is that if people are talking about you, if people are talking about your business, the lender is going to hear about that, too, because they are in the community, right? They, the lender, in this case, Funbox, is going to hear about that. I mean, just do a search on the Internet. And uh, if you are in, uh, in a lot of positive news stories, chances are they're going to see it. And uh, doing research on the Internet is part of uh, an underwriter, an underwriter's uh, responsibilities. So they have to do that anyway. OK, so you can do that. You can if you have a. Uh, 
uh, let's say you want to, uh, and, and everything has to be coordinated. There has to be a code. There has to be a plan around that. Nothing is done randomly. Don't do it randomly, okay? So big decision time, boss. Big decision time. Do you have a plan to boost your business? Have you thought about how to increase the uh, exposure of your business? I'm talking about positive exposure in terms of media attention. Have you reached out lately to a, a local reporter about your business? Think about that. Those are things you need to do, whether you are applying for a business loan with Fundbox or a business line of credit or with another, any other bank, any other lender. You want to have, you want to be in a position that, um, that puts you at a critical advantage. Versus the app, versus the opposition, or versus the, the the competition. I'll be right back. Right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Security Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ever ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee, or tea, or vodka, and let's roll. We're still having a conversation today about the seven hacks that speed up your approval big time. When we talk about Fundbox, business loans, and lines of credit. Hack number six. Here's a good one. You're going to love it. Credit scores. Yeah, credit scores. You need to know your personal and business credit scores. You know, the funny thing about business credit scores is that people always think about business credit scores. They only think about paydex. Well, I'm not saying that paydex is not really important. Paydex is, let's say, the godfather of, uh, of credit scores. Everybody knows that, right? So, and the higher, the better. You want to be close to 80 or 85. That way, you know you're safe. Okay. But what about Experian? What about Equifax? People underestimate those two credit scores. They are important too. Okay, so besides actually uh, registering with uh, Don and Bradstreet and getting your Don your Don's number, you want to actually uh, have the same uh, journey, the same relationship with uh, Experian Business Solutions and Equifax Business Solutions too. That way, you are registered in all three major credit bureaus. And if you have some time, think about your record also when it comes to LexisNexis and uh, SBFE, Small Business Financial Exchange. Okay, so this is important. And uh, so we're talking here about your credit scores. I say credit scores, business and personal credit scores. Okay, so you want to simultaneously work on your personal credit score and your business credit score. This is very important. So how do you how do you get those? You can get your personal credit scores for free. Via a website called annualcreditreport.com or Credit Karma, Nerd Wallet, you have a lot of sources. Okay, for your business credit score, it's a lot harder. You might have to pay for it. And the, and the, and the good thing is, hey, listen, it just makes sense. If you spend $50 or $100 to get a report that will help you, that will help inform your decision on whether or not you should apply, and you apply for a $100,000 or $200,000 business loan with Fundbox. It definitely makes sense from an economic perspective. It is a good investment. Okay. Because you really want to see your business credit score so that you can correct, you can fix whatever uh, issue there is on those reports. Okay. And uh, remember that there are multiple credit scores. When we talk about personal credit scores, you have the FICO 5, the FICO 6, oh, the FICO 8, FICO 9, the FICO bank card score 8. The FICO Next Gen, the Vantage Score 3.0. So you have a lot of credit scores to consider. The bottom line here is to try to get the most recent one. Very important. Hack number seven. This hack is we love this hack. You need to really uh, familiarize yourself with Fundbox criteria. Okay, so you are applying for Fund Fundbox. And they have their own criteria so it's important to to know them you need to know fun box requirements before applying okay and the thing is that it's it, it just kind of the one thing you need to understand is that generally speaking most lenders including fun box do not want to see any recent bankruptcies delinquencies poor business revenue or low credit scores okay however some lenders including fun box make exceptions for applicants that are weak in one area and stronger in another so that's what it is so this is why i was just i was just telling you to be very very clear about what to be clear about your 
business plan, your daily balances, your debt to income ratio. This is important. Okay. And uh, one thing I want to say here is that always, uh, if you want to get a loan, a business loan at Fundbox, make sure that you define the purpose of the loan. You need to raise your loan security in case you want to collateralize the loan. Okay. And this is very important. And uh, so when we talk about raising your loan security, we are speaking about the UCC, it's your UCC lien, right? Uniform commercial code. We are talking about personal guarantee because there is a correlation between your trying to have a collateralized loan and having personal guarantee, especially if you are a sole proprietorship, because if you're a sole proprietorship, there is a mixture. There is a, a confusion, if you will, between your personal assets and your business's assets. Okay, and you need to determine if you qualify and you can qualify based on things like credit score, fund, uh, annual revenue, fund bus will let you know anyway, based on your business plan, right? Do you have a strong business plan? Very important. And make sure that you have a certain documents ready. I am talking about your, 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 of course, business plan, but also your business financial statements, your personal and business tax returns, your personal and business bank statements your business legal documents, okay? And uh, also, before you sign the promissory note from Fundbox, if you are lucky enough to be uh, to be approved, because you can be approved, not a problem. Um, those hacks works. If you're lucky enough, if you apply this seven hacks religiously, you should be able to, before you sign the promissory note, please check the interest rates, the APR, the um, payment schedule, the loan term, if there are any origination fees, and it's important, the prepayment penalties. Okay, obviously this list is not this list is not exhaustive, but this sort of gives you an idea of things you need to pay attention to before signing uh, a promissory note from Fundbox. <music> Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was talking to you about Fundbox business loans and lines of credit and seven hacks that uh, speed up your approval big time. So your personal FICO, business plan, daily balances, debt to income ratio, business boost, your business credit scores, and Fundbox criteria. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I'll speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.